Good morning, everybody. This is Friday, August 21st, 2020. And this is Frank Yoko. I'm the Executive Director of the Enlisted Association of the National Guard. I'm coming to you to give you a quick update on the National Defense Authorization Act and the Appropriations Act, and to let you know where we are right now. We're in recess. Uh, Congress is in recess right now. Uh, there's some talk about them coming in tomorrow to talk about the post office, but they're in recess until about the second week of September. At that point in time, Congress will stay in re uh, will come back from recess for about two or three weeks, probably to pass a continuing resolution to fund the government uh, through the first three months or so of fiscal year 21. Uh, they may take up a, a CARES Act type uh, coronavirus incentive um, package uh, during that time frame, but they're not going to do much else. Uh, so uh, then they'll be gone again uh, right around the beginning of October and they'll stay out until after the elections in November. Probably about the second or third week of November, they'll come back and have what's called a lame duck session. Lame duck means that there's people who are running for office that are gonna be defeated or have already been defeated that are part of this Congress, and they will not be returning in January to be part of the 117th Congress. And so they will come back to vote on different bills, appropriations and authorization acts and different things. Um, however, their term of office is almost over, and so they won't, may not vote the way they normally would vote in favor of their constituency. They may vote their own personal preferences, that sort of thing. It's a lame duck session. Uh, it's just for, uh, uh, to finish up some business for, the, for the, this or for the first of the next fiscal year. Uh, some minor, uh, let's get this done. Maybe uh, an Appropriations Act, uh, maybe a CR for the rest of the year. Maybe some of them get an Appropriations Act and some get a CR, I'm not sure. We'll see how that pans out. But in the NDAA for 2021, those bills have already passed the House and passed the Senate. Now they're, what they're conferencing the bill. They're, they're looking for the differences between the two bills. And uh, those differences have to be worked out as to whether they follow what the Senate wanted or what the House wanted, depending on uh, what the provisions are. If there's a provision that's in there that's on both sides, the same provision is on the Senate side and the House side, then that doesn't get conferenced. It goes straight on through to become law. So on the House bill, the vote on the House bill was 295 to 125. They needed at least 290 votes. They got five extra votes to make it what's called veto proof, which means they have a two thirds majority voting for the bill. And they did. On the Senate side, the vote was 86 to 14. They need 67 votes to make it veto proof. They have 86. So on both sides, House and Senate, they have what's called a veto proof majority. And the importance of that is that the president has issued a statement of administration policy or a, uh, a threat, a veto threat, for both the House bill and the appropriations bill. And uh, because there's an overwhelming majority of people who have voted for those bills in the House and the Senate, um, if he vetoes it and it comes back to the House and Senate, they'll automatically override the veto and it'll become law. So what's in the 2021 NDAA? Well, the first thing is that there's a 3% pay raise. And that's not only supported on the House and the Senate side, but it's also supported with the Defense Appropriations Act that just passed. And so we're looking at a 3% increase in pay starting in fiscal year 2021. Once the legislation is signed, it'll be retroactive to the 1st of October, but it'll be, uh, uh, you have to wait for it to be signed. Uh, also, uh, there's early retirement eligibility for reservists who pulled COVID duty. So if you were on COVID duty, uh, one of the provisions that's in there, it may not last, but it's in there, is that if you miss drills, uh, you're still going to get retirement credit for those missed drills. And so that's a good thing. Uh, there's a, uh, the delays of the med med defense medical health system reforms for another year. You've probably seen some of that in the news recently about some budget cuts that uh, uh, the Defense Department was looking at, $2.2 billion, and it was going to affect military health care. Uh, the president tweeted out and, and said he was not going to support that. Uh, Congress put in both the Senate and the House bill that uh, they wanted to delay any kind of reforms, any kind of downsizing, any kind of billet cuts for another year. And so we'll see where that goes. Uh, they're delaying retirement of the KC-135, the AC-10, and the, uh, uh, excuse me, the KC-10 and the A-10. Uh, they're delaying the retirement on that for at least another year. So we'll still have those uh, airframes around. There's, uh, they also passed TAMP-like coverage for the National Guard for COVID-19 duty. And what that means is if you pull Title 32 duty uh, and uh, you uh, were on Title 32 orders, 
what Congress is saying is we want to give you an additional six months of health care after you come off of your orders, similar to TAMP coverage when you come back from a contingency operation. And so they want to give six months of uh, TRICARE coverage, TRICARE prime tr coverage after you come off of orders. And so that's in there as well. Um, uh, one service record for everybody. Right now, uh, there's a DD-214, which is the gold standard for VA and for employment. And then there's an NGB-22, and nobody really knows what an NGB-22 is. Uh, this would combine the two of them so that there's one, and it's going to be the DD-214. It's not going to be the 22. Uh, but it will all, the DD-214 will also capture National Guard and Reserve Service in it and might be issued a little bit more frequently than just, you know, when you finally get out. And it's not just necessarily for active duty. It could be for reserve service as well. You could get a DD Form 214, and that way employers and the VA will all know what the form is. So that's in there. One of the other things that's in there is removing the one thirtieth rule for hazard pay. So if you're EOD or an aviator or uh, a parachutist or somebody that receives hazardous duty pay, uh, right now your hazardous duty pay is prorated depending on how many days of active duty you're paid for during the month. So if you're pulling drill status and you're getting you're on a mute of four and you have four days pay, normally you'd get four days of hazard pay. It would be the, the monthly rate divided by 30 times four. Uh, this would give you hazard pay in for the entire amount of hazard pay for the full month and not a prorated amount of 1 30th. And so that's in there as well. That's a great thing. We've been fighting the 1 30th rule for a long time. Uh, there's also in, in there hazard pay for COVID-19 duty. So if you're on Title 32 status and you uh, perform COVID duty uh, on that status, uh, there would be hazard pay for that. And that would be retroactive as well. Uh, retirement points for canceled drills. So if you had not, a, you know, you get your, if you, your drills were canceled, you still get retirement points for that as well. Uh, participation in skill bridge, which is a, a kind of a job training type of thing for National Guardsmen. Right now, uh, it only includes National Guardsmen that are on Title 10 status. It doesn't include part-timers or, or Title 32. This would include everybody in the skill bridge program, which is a good thing. Um, the other thing that it's big is that uh, they're reducing the amount of Air National Guard military technicians, about 25, 2,600 of them, and they're increasing the number of AGRs the same. And so what they're basically doing is converting Miltex to the AGR program little by little. They did about 3,000 last year. They're doing another 2,600 this year. And so you can see those changes also occurring. Uh, and those are in both bills, so that's, that's going to happen. Um, so th those are kind of some of the updates for the NDAA. The Defense Appropriations Act is passed as well. Uh, they have some curtailment of the military health system reforms in the, as, as well as the NDAA does, uh, but it does uh, solidify the 3% uh, pay raise. Uh, we'll keep you up to date on what's going on with the NDAA. Uh, right now, the, the, co the uh, conference is, is just the professional staffers that are looking at it. They're getting it ready for the members. Maybe the members will look at it in September. Maybe they'll punt on it until uh, November timeframe. We're not sure yet. Uh, depends on what happens in September. But right now, uh, they're, they're trying to work out the different, the staff is trying to work out the differences. We'll keep you up to date. Thank you very much for watching the video. Appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned with Ingus. If we can do anything for you, uh, hit us up at ingus at ingus.org or give us a call at 1-800-234-3264. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Have a great day.